you know, every week we set aside a few minutes just to look at specifically Bible prophecy. And the reason we do this is because the Bible predicts that in the last days there will be certain events that will take place. Some of these prophecies are very specific, and they will mark the last days and be for us signs uh, of Jesus' soon return. So we believe that what's happening in the world today is a fulfillment of those Bible prophecies. We turn our attention to the nation Israel. Uh, as it's been said, Israel is God's prophetic uh, clock. And so today I want to look at several recent events that have prophetic significance collectively, really, and they seem to all be in concert with each other. There seems to be this connection between all of the things that are taking place sort of in this rapid succession, one after the other. And I want to start with first this Myanmar cyclone uh, just that happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the Associated Press had an article on Friday uh, recording the death toll to be at close to 78,000 people. And they think that there's still another 56,000 people that are still missing, even two weeks after this uh, cyclone. You know, uh, it's not just so much the cyclone, it's the aftermath of the cyclone, what comes as a result of the cyclone, uh, the, getting the food and the water to people. You know, how many people die after, not just because of the cyclone, but because of the effects of the cyclone. And so they expect that death toll to rise. You know, I was trying to get my mind around this number. You know, when you read a news article or you see the reports on the news, on the TV or on the internet, you know, it's sort of a mind-numbing number. I mean, it's just, you know, 78,000. You think about that number, but think about it in terms of the windward side of Oahu. That's almost the entire population of the windward side of this island. If you can just kind of, and these are people. These are brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, grandparents, grandchildren. And they're gone. They're gone because of this uh, weather-related uh, event. And then it wasn't too long after that, of course, that we had the earthquake in China. And this is another mind-numbing number. They're estimating the death toll to be over and having exceeded 22,000 people. And they're actually estimating that that will continue to rise even double. And they suggest that we might see that number increase to about 50,000 people. Again, a just a horrific, cataclysmic, unthinkable tragedy that has taken place uh, both in Burma and then now in China. What, are, what is the prophetic significance of this? Well, I suggest to you that this does fulfill a last day prophecy, specifically as Jesus spoke to the disciples when they asked him, what will be the signs of your soon return. Matthew's gospel records it, as does Luke's gospel in chapter 21. Matthew, it's in chapter 24, verses 4 through 8. Again, let me set the scene just real quickly here. The disciples ask Jesus, uh, what will be, what will the world be like? What will be the signs that will indicate that you're coming back as you said you would? And this is his answer. He answers and says, verse 4, Matthew 24, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be, watch this, famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes 
in di diverse places or various places. All these are the beginning of, now if you're reading a King James, it's going to say sorrows there. I think that's a poor translation. Uh, actually, a better translation would be birth pains. In other words, what Jesus is saying is that these earthquakes, these famines, these pestilences, these wars, these rumors of wars, these nations rising against nations, these kingdoms against kingdoms, these will be the beginning of birth pains. Well, what do we know to be true about birth pains? I don't speak as a, uh, one who has experienced them firsthand, but I can tell you uh, secondhand, having been there at the birth of our children, that the birth pains come in uh, shorter frequency and with greater intensity. You know, if I remind you about the uh, tsunami that took place on the south southern hemisphere of this uh, planet, uh, that seems like it was quite a while ago. You know what? It wasn't that long ago. We, we seem to be seeing the fulfillment of what Jesus was saying in that these earthquakes, these pestilences, these famines, these events, these global weather patterns are taking place with greater frequency and with greater intensity. The death tolls, the numbers, this one article in Forbes.com, uh, it's interesting, I, I caught this, um, it says, whoops, wrong direction here, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, notice it says here that uh, authorities yesterday estimated that more than 50,000 people died from Monday's 7.9 magnitude earthquake, China's worst natural disaster in a generation. Now, this is interesting because, and this is what I mean by it ties in collectively, prophetically, all of these prophecies that were foretold, some of which by the prophets of old, that this is what would come to pass. And when you see these things begin to come to pass, you can know that the Lord's return is nigh. So we've got all these earthquakes and famines and pestilences that come as a result. And then in concert with that, you have Israel's celebration of their 60th year returning as a nation. This is huge. In fact, I suggest to you, as we'll see in a moment, this is perhaps one of the most significant prophecies in all the Bible, the rebirth of Israel as a nation. Listen, no other nation on the face of the earth from the history of mankind from the beginning from Adam to now has ever, after extinction, returned to their land, preserved their language, and returned as a people and as a nation. And the scriptures are replete with prophecies about Israel and their return as a nation. Well, May 14th, 1948, this month, they celebrated their 60th year returning as a nation against all odds. And as soon as they were rebirthed as a nation, the Arabs were right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> My people <laughs> were right there to try to exterminate them, eliminate them, annihilate them. Why? Because they're God's chosen people. Listen, God is not through with the Jew. God has a plan for his people, the nation Israel. Well, now, when I say what I'm about to say, at first you might not quite get your mind around it or grasp it, but here it is. Do you realize that the attacks on this country on September 11th of 2001 were due in large part to our support of Israel? When those Muslims... Through, uh, flew those planes into the uh, World Trade uh, Center and the Pentagon, they were waging an attack on this nation because this nation supports the nation of Israel. 